Um, I'm in Kenny's Window and Keith Martin's Almanac. Um, I'm Pete and I play in a band called the Blood Sucking Freaks. Hello, we're Tenderhook, That's formerly Blindside. Yeah, 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 I've just done our first gig tonight as Tenderhook. And it went very well. Very pleased with the sound, even though it is the producers. They don't Dave. <laughs> Dave Mouse. The local music program on 3D Radio? Yes, 3D Radio, that is, yes. Local and live, Friday nights, 6.30 to 8. <laughs> I think it's a good scene. I think it's one that is taken too much for granted. And I think that um, if everyone was more switched onto it, they'd find out what a good thing it is. But possibly the only reason that it is good is because there's not everyone switched onto it. So. Um, I think it's um, it's a scene that would grow well if it did grow, but it's still good quality even though it's small. We always go and see bands like Something for Kate, and um, we play with bands like Automatic, uh, Jebediah, and I mean those bands really love coming here because the reception is just so great. Um, like to see like to see more of it for the local stuff because I mean the, the local bands of today will be the future uh, youth network bands of tomorrow. So it is it's healthy it's healthy, and I think. Um, I don't know. In the future, I think they can. I think at this time, like in the last few years, it's got better. Like early '90s, it was just sort of picking up, and it's sort of. It's, I don't say. I don't think it's peaking yet, but it's. There's plenty of stuff out there. So you, you've always got a weekend where you've got a couple of bands to go see. Uh, like you know, like people that come and see, say a band like the Freaks, will still go see the Mark of Cain. Like it's like a very uh, all the violets. It's very uh, everybody likes everything. Well, Melbourne's very clicky, and uh, we like that sort of genre, and that's all there is. Yeah, hell music scene. Yeah, yeah, good. Love it's it. lying. It's all lies. It's all lies and deception. That's Believe it, me. Who knows? Who knows the same? I guess in Adelaide, the old boss is the new boss. So therefore. A band like us being unsigned will find it a lot harder to play with international and interstate bands. The old boss is the new boss. The bands are better in Adelaide, say, than any other state, but the crowd maybe isn't as good as other states, you know, so if we could get the hell crowd with these hell bands, we'd be large. Unfortunately, most of the bands that have the motivation and the will to take themselves that seriously aren't very good, and the ones that are good take themselves with a pinch of salt and therefore don't have the motivation to become good so I think it ends up being a scene that's good for Adelaide people and you have to really be here to um, appreciate it. Yeah I think the scene at the moment is is really developing and if you're in the scene it's a bit clicky like a lot of things in Adelaide unfortunately yeah I think it is if you're um if you're willing to become one of them. But it's who you know and how you kiss their ass in Adelaide unfortunately. I think the thing about Adelaide is a lot of the venues are actually in the city mm. itself, as you said before, like, you know, we're very lucky we can travel from one end of the street to another end of the street and there's venues there, but those venues are only going for select different styles of bands. Uh, pretty much the producers actually, uh, and uh, pretty much the Bad Love Bar as well. Because it's pretty carefree sort of atmosphere at the Crown Lake or places like that. It's like really hampered and uh, you know it's full of yobbo sort of you know everybody there looks like they're from the bloody Ramad Centre. <laughs> so you sort of like oh, I get why. okay it's crowded. Uh, you, you're not going to really be comfortable and see a band. And Austin, I mean you've got to line up with a bloody ticket to get in there half the time. And and you know then if you're not in the first two rows, it's like so to really see a band, probably producers or bad love bar or even Exeter. The venues are good, but we need we do need more, and we need more support from the unis. Uh. Venues. Um. Well. This joint's pretty cool out the back. Uh, Mad Love Bar. Um, where else? 
Hold fast. Hotel down at Glenelg, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and so yeah, it's sort of everywhere's cool. Depends on the scene, you know, if there's dudes getting into it, jumping around, going mental, getting pissed and stuff. Yeah. Too, unfortunately has probably one of the best sounding areas so um, sometimes we have to go there. Um, Tivoli used to be good in terms of atmosphere and visual being able to see the band. Um, a few places like the Austro and the Exeter um, tend more to get acts where sound doesn't matter so much and that's fine because you could probably you it wouldn't be to make a better sound would be a very difficult thing um, in those sorts of venues. I think over the last, uh, certainly over the last 10 years and more so over the last five years, um, that sort of east coast and somewhere else is disappearing and you know, some, some bands from Adelaide, most notably uh, within Australia at least, the Mark of Cain and um, what are they? I was going to say 60 foot robot or whatever, what, sorry hang on, like Super Jesus, that's right. Melbourne and Sydney seem to have a bit more respect. Like, I notice if you go over to Melbourne and pull a good crowd, everybody likes you in Adelaide, even if you're, like, take for Super Jesus, who were Hell's Kitchen. They played their asses off over here with not even a, not even, a, wouldn't even find a DB interview or same with Price of Silence. A band, Price of Silence were like the second biggest pulling band besides the Mark Cain in Adelaide. Not even a sausage. Yeah, I suppose, well, so all the record company dudes and all the dudes in the know, they're supposed to be, you know, in Sydney and Melbourne and stuff, so maybe they're trying to cruise there to get, you know, sort of noticed a bit more easily. It's the distance as well, they're so far away from the East Coast where, you know, so so cool to so, all happening, but I guess it's just a position thing, they feel that they're a long way away, and it's unfortunate, hopefully we can develop something here to keep the bands here. Yeah, a lot of the bands that leave, um, yeah, they, they, they've got... Um, delusions of grandeur to the point where they don't last long once they get interstate they all end up having an argument and coming home usually and getting into a, a more casual band. You get unearthing and you get um, things that are um, good for Triple J and good for their listeners but not so much um, I mean, if a, if, a, if a small band does release um, an album, it'll usually get into the PSFM top 20 charts at some stage if it does okay, whereas Triple J charts are always UMI and always the bands that don't need much help. Local radio, 3D radio, um, I guess they do a lot for local acts, like they play you know, demos to CDs, so in that way, um, but I suppose Triple J, they sort of they're sort of, uh, yeah, they're getting there with the Adelaide bands. Like, you know, of course, Super Jesus, Mark Kane, all those bands getting a lot of air play. Um, Especially Richard Kingsmill, he's been pretty good. Yeah, Richard Kingsmill, pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, 3D radio, local radio really gets behind the local bands. And I think that's important because there's no other places uh, you know, for them to be heard. But on local radio, you know, it doesn't cost them anything and they give anyone a chance. So that's very important to our scene. I think 3D is the only, the only radio station with a policy of playing demo tapes, so if you do hear a, an, an Adelaide band, it would be more likely called Chisel than anything. Well, yeah, National Airplay, that plays a big sort of big role because, um, you know, when, when you go into state and stuff, you know, usually you're starting from scratch, no one knows you, no one wants to know you. So if you get a bit of, like, even just one song, you know, that dudes catch on to and they sort of remember the name, then you go into state and you're sort of already well known, your homework's already done for you, so. Because we've, like, done a lot of payola to our friends at 3D and that, that's got some, you know, tasteless people to us show that. Obviously 3D and, um, you know, 5AN. <laughs> 3D Radio, which is probably one of the best community radio stations. 3D Radio, which is probably one of the best community radio stations in Australia. Has is great at, at influencing what happens in Adelaide and also giving people in Adelaide a chance. But also, um, again, if you're not in the scene, you probably don't listen to 3D radio. Well, I mean, 
the only local stuff you hear on like Triple J is Super Jesus, Mark Kane, Revolver getting a, Revolver. Getting a, a good I've thing, heard um, I heard Blindside on there. Yeah. Um, God, who else? Oh, Test Eagles, I heard once. Um, and yeah, the only other time was when they were in Adelaide and they did the Adelaide thing. Other than that, I uh, so that's all you hear is the people that are like. We have labels um, here in Adelaide, which um, you've got like the Hip to Hate, you've got Krell. Um, the Modern Recordings. Modern stuff. Recordings is doing stuff. Um, we've got studios happening and we've got the people here with the know-how and stuff. Oh, well, Bastard Records for sure, you know, it's got to be the most uh, it's been mo one. most helpful one. Uh, Bastard Records, the, uh, the beautiful band Exploding White Mice, they sort of start up their own record label and they're sort of helping out a few bands um, where they're not ripping them off but trying to, you know, get them out there like, um, uh, or they're helping themselves, exploding white mice and bands like Numbskulls and Cranktus and uh, who else? Blood Sucking Freaks I think were on there. And but uh, yeah, Dobbinator, um, Greasy Pop was a great label. I remember I used to go to um, down to Seeing Years, you know, and uh, they would recommend what to buy. You know, I didn't realise the, the, the bastards behind the counter are the ones that owned the label. But yeah, well, Frill at the moment is a bit of a force here. And South Australia, namely Honeyfix and Test Eagles have been signed to that label. There's been lots of them, you know, Pop Gun and Dominator and uh, all the people that have run those smaller uh, record labels, Greasy Pop, under Doug Thomas at least. It started with the um, sort of a, a, a pseudo Irish pub scene in the form of the Australian rock scene and that slowly became our own version of grungier and grungier, so you ended up with sort of a, a surf thrash, mosh pit, messy, drunken debauchery sort of scene. A lot of Australian bands. And Masters of Apprentices? Master Apprentices. Um, Gold Chisel. Bits of ACDC. A musical history, oh, very much so, yeah. Built bands, mate. I could rattle them off, rattle them off. All the great bands that I have listened to. How far back do you want to go? Do you want to go back to when the Angels were uh, Moonshine Jug and String Band or what, you know? Well, yeah, it's got a pretty rich musical history. Um, Drew Darren and I used to go and watch bands such as uh, Lizard Train, uh, Mark Kane. Uh, Theatre Clams, Exploding White Mice, I think. They're from there. They're pretty old. <laughs> uh, pretty much it starts with the mice for me, uh, for uh, punk rock sort of history anyhow.